So what I thought I'd do tonight is just make a, a very, very simple video about quantizing a live multi-track drum kit onto the grid in Cakewalk. So the first thing I'd recommend that you do is go to the preferences dialog box. You can get there by hitting the P key. You then want to go to the editing tab here on the bottom left and under the clips header where it says selection after single split you want that to be the right portion and where it says when splitting clips in groups create new groups you want to enable that setting just apply that and after that um, head to the keyboard shortcuts panel and this bit is optional but the way I like to set it up is search for track manager and I've got this set to the alt H key and secondly search for hide tracks and I've got this set to the H key and um, you can set this up whatever way you like this is just my preference so what we'll do now is I'll just quickly talk you through what we've got here and um, we've got a 10 channel drum kit that consists of a kick, a front of kit, mic, a snare top, a snare bottom, a rack tom, a floor tom, stereo overheads, hi-hats, a room mic and a hall mic. And at the bottom here we've got a guide guitar that we tracked just to give the, the drummer some help with the song structure. What I'll do now is I'll just play through what we have so you can hear how tight things currently are. So yeah, not a million miles away, there are a few double kicks that seem a bit early and there's a few late snares here and there so we can definitely tighten things up. And one other thing you can do here is you can enable Cakewalk's vertical grid lines. I've currently got the grid lines set up to sit behind the clips like this but you can change them to sit on top of the clips and the way you do that is you navigate to the view tab then to display and then to vertical grid lines and hit in front of clips. And what this enables you to do is you can just visually check how close things are. So for example, this kick is early, this one here, and we will go to this one. And again, that one's a touch early too so yeah it just gives you that visual feedback if you feel like you need it so the way I like to edit drums and it will work for this track is I'll only edit the kick and the snare onto the grid everything else such as the toms the hi-hats and the cymbals they stay loose most of the time I'll only edit the toms the hi-hats or the cymbals if a part calls out for it such as like really fast 16ths on a hi-hat or if the drummer's maybe like leading with a floor tom or mostly if there's a dodgy fill that needs tightened up but 9 times out of 10 I'm sticking with the kick and the snare and that's the only thing we're editing to the grid so with that in mind if you just switch to the mixer panel um, what I like to do is I like to bring everything down levels wise aside from the guide, the kick, the snare and the overheads so I'll bring the hats, the room and the hall down. I'll bring the rack and the floor down. And the front of kit and the snare bottom, I'll make either mute them or they'll just be low in the mix. But yeah, the overheads obviously encompasses the toms. Any cymbals and the kick and the snare are what we're going to edit from, so we need to hear them clear. And what this does is it just clears up the monitor mix for the edit so you're not distracted by bleed or maybe like a natural delay from a room mic or anything similar. So now we can actually start getting things in shape here. The first thing to do is click the top clip 
and then shift click to the bottom clip. Once you've done that, right click on the clip and select create selection group from selected clips. Once you've done that, you'll see a small number in a black box appear at the left hand corner of each clip. That just signifies the clip's selection group. And now that we've got these clips grouped, what I like to do is I'll move the snare channel to just under the kick channel and I'll select every other channel and just hide it from the view with the H key. That doesn't delete things from the session, it only hides things out of view because these are the two things we're going to be concentrating on so we don't get sort of distracted by other tracks. Once we've got this, I'll press the N key to put off Snap to Grid. I'll then press the C key to get rid of the control bar and I'll sort of just move this over just to give us some more space and I'll maybe tweak the waveform resolutions if I have to. But yeah, now we're, we're ready to get things sort of chopped and start editing. So what I like to do is, as you can see, we've got kick transients here and we've got a snare transients on the bottom. So with the aim assist, which you can toggle with X like that, I'll just put this about here and I'll press the tab key. And what that does is it moves the now time to just the start of the first kick transient. I'll then zoom in a bit and make sure that we're not shaving off anything massive at the start of each clip. This one I'm going to move back slightly. I'll then hit the header of the clip and press S to split. So what we've done is we've split the kick, we've split the snare, but we've also split all of those other tracks that we've hidden from the view. So even though we can't see them, they're still being split because we've already grouped them. Now what I can do is zoom out slightly, press tab again, and this one is far too late, so we'll manually have to move this back. Just like that, split, again zoom out, tab. This one's picking up a snare, that one's fine, we can split that. That kick looks fine, tab, fine again, that one's a tiny bit late so we can move that back. And just be mindful to always hit the, the header here, don't click the body of the clip because that only edits this clip like that. We always have to be clicking the header of the clip just like that. So yes, yeah, split, tab again, that one looks cool. That one's far too late. And that's, that's an example of why you can't just blindly tab and split because you're going to be chopping off the tops of hits all over the place and fixing them and finding them is going to be a nightmare. So it's good practice to just sort of do it half manually like this. But yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to be sort of too accurate as long as you're in the ballpark, it'll be totally fine. But of course, if you want to be 100% accurate, feel free to zoom in all the way. I used to do that, now I don't do it. Um, and I've not noticed the difference and no one else has noticed the difference. So I don't really spend the time on it anymore. And when you're editing maybe 10 tracks at a time, um, it gets far too monotonous to be 100% accurate 100% of the time. There's another one, far too late, so that's what you really need to watch out for. Zoom back out. That's how it's got everything uh, sort of split where we want them. What I can now do is bring back in the control bar, bring back the track labels. Uh, I'll press Alt-H to bring up the track manager and I'll just bring back in all these tracks that we've previously hidden from the view. They're all back in screen now. Um, so what we can do now is we can highlight all of the drum clips and we can quantize them. So hit the Q key to bring up the quantization dialog box. The resolution for this is, is cool staying at 16, so that's a good starting point for most things I find. Um, what you want to change here is, I think the default is audio snap beats, so I like to change that to audio clip start times. 
uh, and the strength options here and the auto crossfade times I just leave as the default you might have to change it when you're maybe editing like a fill or a, a snare roll or something or maybe maybe doing some metal music or maybe like a live drum kit on like a techno song um, you might want it a bit stronger with less swing but uh, the default works for most things so yeah just press ok and I'll put on snap to grid and I'll zoom in a bit and as we can see fades have appeared between these hits um, and we'll zoom right in on a few kicks and as you can see that's right on the grid now this one right on the grid too we we'll just choose a few other ones this one is perfect for good measure we'll just get some visual feedback on the snares so we'll choose this one perfect we'll choose this one I think this was the late one perfect again and we'll check this one absolutely perfect so what I'll do now is, um, now that everything's quantized, I'll just play through what the quantized drums sound like. And finally, what we'll do is we'll just do a comparison between unquantized and quantized. That's how I like to edit drums in Cakewalk. I hope it, it helps some people. Um, the only other thing to be mindful of is when you're actually quantizing. It's up to you, but I like to do it in chunks. So I like to do it in maybe 16 bar chunks, maybe 32 bars. Uh, and then I'll check that the quantizing is set to the correct resolution because sometimes you need to go in and change things. And I find it easier to do this in parts rather than do an entire song and have to find maybe some some dodgy hits within like a four minute song and secondly um, just remember to bounce your clips um, as you go or as you finish editing the drums it's just it helps out your processor and it, it means your hard drive isn't going crazy trying to find all these tiny wee drum chunks everywhere I've got a keyboard shortcut set up for the B key but if you don't have that you can go into the clips here and just hit bounce the clips and what that does is it just bounces all of these small chunks into one solid chunk per track and it just makes things work a lot smoother <laughs> 